Hi guys, Shitting Full of Holes here with another video on the different calibers. Uh, I'm going to do some penetration testing. Um, calibers ranging from uh, 0 0.177, uh, 0 0.22, 0 0.25, and the 0.357. I'm also going to uh, talk a little bit about the air rifles and air pistols that you see here. This is uh, the only uh, 0.177 that I own. This is a Crossman 1377. It is a pump pistol. Uh, you pump it 10 times to get the maximum velocity out of it. Now you can pump it up more but it's not recommended and I don't think you'll really get much of a gain out of it. But uh, you know definitely a nice little pistol. This one has been modified. I've modified the valves, modified the seals, uh, the trigger's also been modified. Um, this pistol produces between 600 and 700 feet per second, depending on the pellet used. Uh, if you buy one of these pistols out of, well, it, it, right out of the box, it won't produce that because this one has been modified. So that's it for my 177. I have another Crossman pistol here in uh, 22 caliber. This is the 2277. Same thing. It's a pump. Um, everything's been pretty well modified on this, the barrel, the valves, the trigger, breech, on and on. This pistol produces uh, between 500 and 600 feet per second, mainly because it's a bigger caliber now, so the air used uh, doesn't push it out as fast. But, very, very nice pistol. Um, <clears throat> same thing, if you get this pistol at the store, it won't shoot the same velocity as this one out of the box, uh, not until you modify it. Uh, another one that I have which is uh, a 2240. Sorry, I'm going to be stretching all across here. 2240 started life as a pistol, now it's a uh, carbine. I have added a high pack to this, which is this uh, extension here, which allows you to pump it up with a hand pump up to 2000 psi. Basically, it turns um, this pistol, which normally uses CO2 cartridges to shoot it, to a PCP uh, pistol or slash rifle, depending on whatever you convert it to. I've basically co converted this to a rifle, and this is also heavily converted. It's got a longer barrel. I've uh, done um, modifications to the valves, the seals, the trigger the breach and then it just goes on also. So this with all its modifications produces about more like 650 to 750 feet per second. This has a lot more oomph than uh, my 22 caliber uh, pump pistol there. Um, the other thing about the high pack is that it allows you to shoot in cold weather whereas the CO2 cartridges do not. But it's a very, very nice rifle. It's a tap driver. Super, super accurate. Um, another 22 that I have here is the Ruger Yukon. It is by far uh, the least favorite. <laughs> so, one of the rifles that I actually just don't really like. It got given to me at this point. Um, but it's a brake barrel, it uses a gas system, or a gas spring system, uh, and produces, I would say, 650 to 750. Um, the, that's one thing I hate about the, or Ruger, or, or Umarex, whoever produces these things, is that they love to hype the numbers, oh, that it'll shoot 1100 feet per second, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, if you're using aluminum pellets, I guess it will, you know. But, anyway, we're throwing it into the mix just so, you know, we can throw it in the mix because we can. Now, here's one of my favorite air rifles, the Hot Sun Model 95. Very well made, very, very good looking. Just everything is made right with this one. Now, this also uses a uh, gas ram or a vortex. Or nitro piston to me they're all the same I don't see much of a difference um, at the end of the day you can call it whatever you want as long as it performs 
So this air rifle produces around about 800 feet per second, just depending on the parts also. Um, very nice uh, air rifle, this one's a 22 caliber. What I like about the Model 95 is you can get it in almost, well for sure in three calibers, you can get it in the 177, the 22, and the .25. So that's nice that you have range to choose from. The other nice rifle I have here is the Hatsan Model 125 Sniper. Um, very nice. This one is in the 25 caliber. Um, it is a heavy rifle. It's definitely a beast. It uses a, a nitro piston. I got this one when uh, Pyramid Air had first started the conversions to nitro piston and selling them separately. And I'm very happy with this conversion. I still have the original uh, spring for this uh, gun in a box, just in case the nitro piston ever fails, which I doubt. So, <clears throat> very, very nice, decently accurate, and a lot of power. This will shoot a 25 caliber pellet at about 700, uh, between 700 and 750 feet per second, just depending on the, on the weight of the pellet also. You can't go too light with uh, a .25 in a spring gun. And all spring guns, just so you know, have a a certain point that you're not supposed to go past in, in heavy and in light. There's really, you know, you're supposed to keep it within those parameters or else it'll start damaging the gun, basically. Here is one of my all-time favorites, the Benjamin Marauder. The Marauder has, oh basically probably one of the best sales in, in air rifles at this point. Um, very accurate. I mean, awesome trigger. This is the first generation. There's a, a, a second generation that's come out. And the second generation is a heck of a lot better. But, you know, the first one is the first one. And you know what, I'm, it still does everything right. So, can't complain about it. This will shoot uh, pellets at about 850 feet per second. So, I would say a good uh, 100 feet per second faster than the Hatsan, but the Hatsan is a spring gun, don't forget, this is PCP. This will, uh, you will have to pump this up to 3000 PSI to get its maximum velocity. The other gun that I have, or air rifle that I have here, is the Benjamin Bulldog. Now this is an absolute... Uh, I mean, this will take care of pretty much anything, except for uh, buffaloes and uh, hippos and elephants. So, but uh, they've taken this thing to Africa and they've tested it almost on pretty much every medium to big game there. Uh, now, when I mean big game, I mean you know it, they've shot I think antelope up close to the 400 pound range so that's pretty heavy uh, considering that most deer only weigh about 180 to you know 250 pounds I mean it's got to be a big deer to weigh past that but uh, definitely has uh, a lot of punch but all that punch means nothing without accuracy and this is definitely a, a decently accurate gun it will do sub 2 inches at 50 yards it'll do sub 4 inches at 100 so that's definitely vital kills out to 100 yards. Also, this uh, gets pumped up to 3,000 psi. Well, when I say pumped up, you're using a, an air tank because I've pumped this thing up numerous times. Trust me, it's a workout. But it's not impossible. It just depends, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> the ammunition I'm going to be using for all these different calibers, um, well, the 177, I'm kind of stuck with this one ammunition. That's pretty much the only one I have. Um, I've started phasing myself out of the 177s. I just don't know why. It's just one of those things. Um, I'm sure there's some brake rifles there out there that are pretty awesome. But I don't know. I've, I've shot 177 a lot in my life when I was a kid. And uh, now that I'm able to own all these bigger calibers, I don't know. It's just uh, it's kind of going back to a pea shooter, if you know what I mean. But I'm not knocking the 177, that's just my own personal preference. So anyway, 177, I've got uh, 7.33 grains here. 
which is about middle of the road, um, not too heavy, not too light. On the 22 calibers, I have uh, you, uh, JSB Exact Kings, but these are jumbo heavies. These are 18.13 grains. So all the 22s are going to be shooting this one. The 25 calibers are going to be shooting JSB Exact King heavies. I think there's a jumbo version, but uh, these are 33.95 grains. Um, very nice pellets. The .357, the Benjamin Bulldog is going to be shooting ammunition from Errol Magnum. This is uh, up to date. This is my favorite ammunition for this uh, Bulldog. Now this is the, the impact. Uh, it's 130 grains. Now there is heavier ammunition. Uh, I think Nosler, the Nosler uh, supplies 140 grains made for this air rifle. But, you know, 130 grains is up there. So Anyway, what I'm going to be using for a or meet you know there's two things I'm going to be using for a penetration medium. Um, one of them is going to be a a laminate flooring or a piece of laminate flooring. Laminate flooring is semi-hard. It's uh, compressed wood with laminate on both sides. It's only about maybe a quarter inch thick. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have pieces here to show you because I've pretty much shot through all of them already. So anyway. Um, <clears throat> Then the ones that I have left are for the testing. So anyway, the other thing that I'm going to be using is a one inch uh, piece of pine board. Now pine is kind of like almost a perfect wood for testing pellets almost because it's it's not a hard wood. It's pretty much a, a it's a pretty much a soft wood, but it's not a super soft wood. So now granted, yes, there's going to be Parts in the in the planking that are going to be softer and harder, but it's still you know a, a gives you an average of what the pellets will do, uh, you know, to a one inch piece of pine board. So I'm not going to show you the the you know the shot for shot. Um, there's a lot of pellet guns here that I have to shoot through, and it's going to take a massive amount of time. And I'll just be wasting your time because you know you're not going to gain anything from watching the shots anyway. So what counts is the end results, and that's what I'm going to show you. And I'll have them all written out, uh, which gun did what, with you know, where. So anyway, I'm going to cut straight to the final with the results. This is the piece of engineered flooring or laminate flooring, if you will. As you can tell it's laminated on one side, it's also laminated on the back. So, here we go. This is the 177 there. That's the Crossman 1377 that did that. Uh, there's the pellet. It's still stuck in the board. It almost wanted to go through, but not exactly. So that's run about six to 700 feet per second. Here's a 2277 shooting at between 500 and, and uh, seven, uh, 500 and 600 feet per second and that went straight through it. So right there pretty much same gun maybe same modifications just different calibers and you can already see the difference. And uh, that there tells you that you know a bigger caliber will normally have a little bit more or retain a little bit more energy down uh, range so here's the 2240 that blew straight through it and everything else blew straight through this board so one board wasn't enough I decided all right let me uh, put two boards together so the 20 all the 22s blew through through it all the 25s blew through it and needless to mention the 357 did too so, now let's just do the 22s and the 25s. So, here is the 2277, which is that pistol. And you can see there that it left a mark and it uh, literally ricocheted out. It almost hit me. And uh, I hate that sound. That so anyway, 
The 2240 has a little bit more power and definitely got stuck in the board. And uh, so this is two put together and uh, gives it a little bit of extra strength. The Ruger Yukon, you can tell there it's in the board, not too deep, but ah, it's still stuck in there. The Hatsun Model 95, that's the one there, a lot deeper because it does have that extra 100 feet per second. This is the Hatsun Model 125 and 25 caliber. Now, I shot it here at the bottom and it blew straight through it. So I thought, well, it's hitting the bottom and it's probably a weak spot. So let me shoot a little higher. So I shot a little higher. That's it there, but it blew straight through it. So not with a massive amount of power, but it, it did go straight through it. Now the Benjamin Marauder, there's the Benjamin, and that absolutely blew straight through it. Just took out everything. There's a 357 that was just for giggles. I didn't want to destroy the whole board with everything that I just shot. So anyway, now here comes the actual test. This is the part that I enjoy, the pine board. So here's the pine board. And uh, like I said, one inch thick pine board. Um, so, let's start with the smallest caliber, the 177. It is in there. It is, uh, you know, you can see it. It's penetrated pretty well, but it is a small pallet. Then the, here's the 2277. It stayed stuck in there, but it could be the board's a little bit harder. The 2240 also stuck in there but not super deep penetration or anything like that the Ruger Yukon didn't do too bad definitely in there the model uh, 95 the Hatsan pretty much the same also in there the Hatsan model 125 sniper 25 caliber now I thought this would blow through it and you know, sometimes it does. I have shot pine boards with it before, and you can see there that it wants to, it's almost there, but not just yet. And like I said, this is shooting around about 100 feet per second slower than the Benjamin Marauder. So there's the Benjamin Marauder. Uh, sorry, I didn't have that marked, but yeah, that's the Benjamin Marauder there. Oh no, there it is, it's marked. Benjamin Marauder 25 blows straight through that thing. Now, here's the Benjamin Bulldog and you can really tell it blows straight through it because it almost leaves a clean hole whereas the the, <clears throat> the Benjamin Marauder kind of takes a chunk with it. You know, as it's slowing down it's starting to dump the energy and trying to grab everything around it. So, that is, like I said, a very good medium for comparison testing between the different calibers. If you have a 22 that blows through the stuff, excellent. You know, then you've got a very nice uh, air rifle, very powerful, and probably would be a a Marauder in 22 caliber, or uh, maybe a Hatsun PCP with you know shooting at about maybe. Uh, a thousand plus feet per second at least. So, anyway, I hope this uh, video helped you out. I hope you got some valuable information out of this. It is not the most sophisticated testing by any means, but definitely, how do I put it, easy testing and an easy way to figure out things. You don't have to have all this, uh, you know, all this equipment and all sorts of stuff just to figure out what the penetration is you know what, what kind of penetration you're getting out of your uh, out of your rifle so anyway uh, like I always say you know pick up an air rifle go out in the woods put up a target shoot it full of holes <laughs>